All right, let's very quickly go to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. We'll read the uh, scripture text for this morning, and then we'll have some special music, and then we'll get right into the message, right into the message. Uh, I don't want you to forget, next week is um, uh, Christmas morning. Christmas morning, uh, we are going to have our service at 10 a.m. 10 a.m., we'll have um, some uh, some coffee and whatnot, so if you show up between 9.30 and 10, there'll be some uh, cinnamon rolls and um, uh, who knows, an assortment of, of delicacies, amen, uh, of, of the donut shop would call them fancies, of, uh, of different uh, pastries and, and, and whatnot. Maybe we'll throw some fruit out there, some grapes and strawberries. Maybe, maybe I'm doing too much here. Uh, but Because I throw out ideas, and then I see Miss Jamie and Miss Sarah and others, they get wide eyes like, you want us to do that? <laughs> I, I don't want to pin that on you, and, 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 but I'm just throwing out an idea. Um, uh, some coffee and, and whatnot. And at 10 o'clock, we'll have our 10 a.m. service. Um, and uh, um, no, uh, no, so no Sunday school at 10. Our main service will be at 10. And then no evening service. So uh, I, I truly hope that you'll come to that. I encourage you to wear something festive. Everybody, you have to wear something green or red. Green or red, or, or a Christmas tie, or a Christmas sweater, or something like that. What I, I have a red sweater. I pulled out of an old um, uh, bin yesterday uh, for the uh, adult Christmas party. It's just a red sweater. I'm going to wear that next week with a, maybe a red or a green tie underneath, and that's about as festive as I'll get. Uh, but um, uh, So I encourage you to do the same. Let's, let's try to be festive here. Uh, but uh, the Christmas spirit. Um, but even if you don't, come to church. I don't care if you wear blue or I just come to church. 10 a.m., uh, be here. Matthew chapter 2, are you there? Say amen. amen. Okay, good. I'm not there yet, so. <laughs> I've put my bookmark in the wrong place. Here we go. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 through uh, 11. The Bible says, Now uh, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he? Uh, where is he that is born, king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when they had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where, where, uh, demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, Art not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily or privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for that young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. And when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. Till, uh, uh, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Verse 11 is our text verse. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Heavenly Father, I'd ask that you would help us this morning. Uh, as we pres- as I uh, present this message, um, a message of, of gifts and um, the greatest gift that has been given to us is Jesus himself. Uh, well, Lord, we could never give anything of that stature. Uh, Lord, thank you so much. Uh, now, Lord, I'd ask that you'd meet with us this morning. Speak to us in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Help us not to shut him out. Help him not to... Help us not to ignore him or to quench him or to grieve him. Uh, Heavenly Father, help us to listen and then obey. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Angels, we have heard on high, sweetly sing.
Miss Crystal and Miss Renee, it was your first time singing uh, in a, what would that be, a quartet? A quartet. Uh, and um, next week they'll do solos individually. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Butterflies in the stomach. I just got done telling Joe that I was so nervous I thought I was going to pass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we first started singing up here, I was it was nerve-wracking, uh, of course, because when we started, too, it was always packed in here I'm talking it was like so there's tons of people and Miss Harrison man she just drill instructor you know and and uh I could get up and sing no problem but Miss Harrison would listen for the nuances and she'd say Jake you were too loud or Jake you, you know the bass is the foundation of the song so you have to you're like the percussion of the of the of the group and you have to I'm like oh so you're saying it all depends on me? Yes. Well, I don't want to sing. Uh, but um, uh, good job. Uh, I'm proud of both of you and um, uh, your willingness to do that. Many people, uh, I think they, they, number one fear is public speaking or public performance. And uh, you guys did a great job. You ladies did a wonderful job. And uh, I'm uh, proud of both of you. Um, and uh, uh, I hope that Okay, when we serve the Lord, uh, I hope you understand it's not a performance. It's not something you're doing. It's you're using your gift or your talent or your ability for the Lord. Um, so uh, to jump in here, it says the, uh, these, these wise men, we always say three wise men because there were three gifts, but the Bible doesn't specify really how many. It doesn't say that we say we three kings, but we don't really, I don't know if they were actually kings or not. Uh, but the Bible does specify that there were some wise men, and they went to seek the Lord. Now, another thing that stuck out to me, it says, and when they went into the house, it does not say the shed or the barn and the manger. It says the young child. I believe that the journey took quite some time. Now, um, that's not my focus this morning. Uh, my focus is, is um, uh, what to get Jesus for Christmas. What to get Jesus for Christmas. Now, I'm, I, I do not want to dive into this, but um, because I've never viewed it this way, um, and, and you will run into some Christians. We've had people here that, come, that have been members of our church who are against wreaths, who are against Christmas trees, who are against the whole, the whole thing of Christmas because where it came from, Constantine was at war with his brother. He became um, uh, the emperor in three, 306, and he was at war with his brother Maximinus, Maximinus, uh, we'll call him Maximus. He, Max, we'll call him Max. He was at, at war with his brother Max in 312, I believe it was. And it was during this time that Constantine had um, a vision of a cross in the sun. And uh, it was written in Latin, by this sign ye shall conquer. And, um, at three thir and, and uh, he confirmed it by a dream the next night. And by from 312 in the vision and the dream to 313, um, uh, he made Christianity 
basically legalized because at that point it was, um, and people were being killed for it. They were outcasts of society. And uh, they made Sunday a national holiday so the soldiers could worship. But what has happened is, is, is um, and, and all of that basically, Constantine and all that, it came to be known as the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church. And what has happened is it dovetailed into Christianity because we still run on the Julian calendar, a Roman calendar. That's what we operate on. The world operates on January through December and all of, the, uh, all of that. Um, and there are people who have come, who've taken things out of the Bible and said, well, we're not supposed to recognize or celebrate like, you know, these religious holidays that the world can, you know, Christmas, uh, Jesus was not born on December 25th. It doesn't make sense because I'm just, in, they wouldn't have traveled during, uh, in, uh, in that part of the year, uh, uh, world. December is rainy and it's cold. They would not have been traveling. And it, uh, they went to go pay their taxes. You didn't pay your taxes during that time of year because people couldn't travel. So, well, Jesus wasn't born on, De- that's not the point. That's not the point. I celebrate Christmas on De- December 25th. Yes, I know it's a social construct of, 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 um, of, of how we celebrate it. But you, you celebrate it the way you want to. If you want to do Saturnalia and, and, and you're against the wreaths and the Christmas trees, I don't care. I think they're pretty. We're putting them up. I like them. I like red and green. I like the lights. I like, I like it all. It's festive. I enjoy it. And it's a time where we, walk, where we separate to say, our Savior was born. My Savior was born. And when we get to heaven, I, I, I suppose... Maybe if it's important, which I don't think it is, we will know the, the birth. Of, we'll know when Jesus was actually born. But that's not so important as we know that he was born. And we sing a song. Christ was born to die upon Calvary. Born to die upon Calvary. He was wounded. Uh, or, oh, Miss Sarah, sing it for me. Jesus, no, sing it. Jesus suffered my sins to forgive. Thank you, Brother Pitt, Miss Sarah. Born to die upon, upon Calvary, he was wounded that I might live. He was wounded. Now, I don't care when he was born. The fact, that what, that, the fact is, is that he was born, and he did die, and he did save me. Now, these wise men, when they went and, and, and found Jesus, they presented unto him gifts. Three things that I took away from the wise men is, number one, they pursued him. They pursued the Savior. They said his star. We saw his star and came from afar. Number one, they pursued him. Number two, they fell down in front of him. They prostrated themselves in front of him. They bowed down before him. Not Mary, by the way. They didn't bow before Mary. Mary was the vessel of which the Christ would come, through whom the Christ would come. They didn't bow to Mary. They bowed down to the Savior. And number three, they gave him or presented unto him gifts. So I looked at that and I'm like, man, okay. Am I pursuing Jesus? In my life, am I pursuing Jesus? You say, well, how, how do we do that? All right, well, there's, it, you learn how to. You learn, well, okay, where is Jesus? Well, right now, we know Jesus is on the right hand of the Father up in heaven, amen? Jesus is there. How can I get to, how can I get to Jesus? How do I pursue Jesus? Number one is through salvation, you get saved. Number two, you start living for him. Start living for Jesus. You adopt the phrase, what would Jesus do? How would Jesus do it? Well, how do I know what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? It's very simple. What does the Bible say? If you find out what the Bible says, you can pursue Jesus. And then uh, uh, number, number two, they prostrated themselves before him. They bowed before him. Do you ever find yourself on your knees praying to the Lord? Do you ever find yourself laying and maybe you have a, a special place, a closet, so to speak, where you lay out and you pray before the Lord? Do you have a, a time where you, man, I, I don't, I don't um, um, uh, present my, my prayer life to people, but this morning I, I, I don't do it a lot, but I, 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 I shed tears. Some people would say I was weeping. I was not weeping. I shed some tears uh, about the lost, about my sin, about my condition, about uh, uh, the future and the hope of the church and my heart and my family. And, and I prostrated myself before the Lord. He is worthy to bow before. He is worthy to kneel before. He is worthy to go before and kneel and say, oh God, you are worthy and praise him for who he is and what he did. And then number three, they presented unto him gifts. That's, it's wonderful to pursue him, to get to know him. It is 
humbling and yet a blessing to be able to prostrate myself before him. That's wonderful. But I, I find myself empty. I find myself um, lacking if I do not present a gift. In, in ancient times, in old times, uh, or even medieval times, you would, you would usually send a gift before you, sent your, before you came before royalty. Any, are anybody familiar with that? You would send a gift before a, before a king or a queen or before um, uh, someone in, in a high position. You would send a gift or you would bring a gift. And many times, the gift would go and be to the king before you, present, before you came before the king. It's like sending somebody flowers. You know, they're at work and you, you know, your lady's at work and you send her some flowers. And, oh, and somebody brings the gift. That way, when you come before them, there's a, a, um, a, 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 a it's a happy, uh, you, uh, uh, it's a happy time. It's a happy uh, re- reuniting of each other. It, it's a good time. So, do I present? Am I giving the Lord any gifts? Do I give Him anything? Now, these were valuable gifts. Gold, of course, is um, everybody's familiar with gold, and myrrh and uh, frankincense. These were. Um, like a, like a, a, a like a perfume, uh, like a like a uh, guys call them colognes. Uh, I don't I don't wear perfume. I wear cologne. You know, um, and even it was uh, prophesied in Song of Solomon where it said, "Who is this that cometh out of the wilderness like pillars of smoke, perfer- perfumed with myrrh and frankincense, with all powders of the merchants of the merchant?" Now at this, we're in the season of giving, right? Anybody you bought any Christmas presents this year? You've got some. You've acquired some. Yeah, Bill, I'm expecting one from you. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm now, watch Bill. Bill's such a good guy. He'll get me something. I'm not, I don't expect anything. Um, uh, but it is required that all ushers buy the pastor a gift. Uh, Brother Pip, go put on a coat. Uh, all, <laughs> hey, you, you don't. I'm already going to suffer this afternoon. So just. Uh, so at this season of giving, I want us to think about what we can do for our Lord. What can we do for Jesus? Um, what can we possibly give Jesus? Uh, all the silver is his. All the gold is his. All the rubies, all the diamonds, all the, it's all his. The Bible says he owns all of it. The cattle on a thousand hills. How about all the hills? It's all his. He owns the cattle on the hills. He owns the grass that they're standing on, the dirt that they're standing on, all the way down to the core of the earth. God owns it all. He, he owns it. He owns it. Now, I go out, and I, um, I pursue a good relationship with my wife and with my kids, with my family, with my friends. Uh, I pursue those things. I, I, I want to know how to navigate. I want to know how to uh, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. I want to be able to use my words to encourage people, to help people, to get people right. Um, uh, to to uh, There's a time to stop talking and just... No longer try to convince someone to change and to do right and to repent and, and come out from the pig pen, uh, but to just go into prayer for them and say, let God have them. God's going to do what God's going to do with them. But I pursue a good relationship. Um, uh, and since I pursue that, and since I sometimes humble myself before them and, and um, uh, let Jamie be right, and um, uh, if I have wronged one of my kids, I apologize. So I, I don't necessarily prostrate myself before my kids, um, but um, I posture before them. Uh, but uh, I, do, I do present them gifts because I love them. I love them, and I want to give them good gifts. Now, I don't want you to be mistaken. Don't be mistaken. I know you're not. If there's anything you've been taught around here, it's salvation by, faith, by grace through faith. It's salvation in Christ alone, through his blood alone, not through baptism, not through anybody, not through anything, but Christ alone. So don't be mistaken when you uh, uh, hear somebody say or, or you um, uh, maybe have it in your thoughts that um, you are not saved. Get this. You're not saved by giving things to the Lord. No good things that I have done. My righteousnesses are as filthy rags, not by works, but by faith. You were not saved by that. So anytime you hear a preacher 
or an evangelist or, or some, some minister somewhere. Tell people, give your life to the Lord. Give your heart to the Lord to be saved. That, 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 that's not biblical in any way, shape, or fashion. Give your life to the Lord. The thing is, is we don't give God anything to be saved. He gives us something. He gave us something. You are saved by receiving something from the Lord. When you receive his son, you receive eternal life. See, it's not about you giving, it's about you taking. You understand that, that Jesus is the gift. We don't give God anything. You don't go to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm giving you something. No, you're not giving anything. You are receiving something. There's a fly here. I'm about to, he's about to receive eternal life. Sucker, gotcha. Okay, now some people, now uh, is it the Buddhists? I just killed somebody's grandfather. Uh, he was just reincarnated into a worm, you know, I don't know. What kind of life do you have to live to be reincarnated as a fly? Ugh. You gotta be a bad person. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you don't, uh, you get saved by receiving something from the Lord. You receive his son, you receive eternal life. You don't give him anything in order to be saved. Some people say, well, you give him your faith. It wasn't my faith to give in the first place. The Bible says that he would give me, per adventure, he gave me the ability to repent. He gave me the ability to have faith in him. He opened my eyes that I may be able to see. But for those of you who are already saved, if you're saved and you know it, raise your hand. If you're saved and you know it, raise your hand. Okay, good. Put your hands down. You're saved and you know it. I want you to think about this. If you give uh, a presence at this time of year, and I do, I have a, I have a few bought um, uh, for uh, uh, some folks. I've got some ordered and whatnot, and they're on their way. I like to give gifts. Now, when I give a gift, I try to look at a need. I try to look at a want. I try to look at something that they've been asking for for a while. I try to pay attention uh, throughout the year. The other day, um, we were looking at something, and Jamie never, she never looks at things for herself, ever. It's always for the kids. It's always for her mom. It's always for somebody. It's always for, she never, it's never her. But so the other day, we were looking, and she saw um, this nice little wallet um, she could put her cards in instead of taking the big old wallet with her everywhere and being worried about it being in the per or in the cart. And all this, she said, I could take it and put my cards in there, just put it in my pocket. You know, that would be a lot easier. I was like, you're right, it would. And the other day, and I was paying attention and I was looking at stuff for me and she was looking at stuff for the boys and she looked in this glass cabinet and she went, ooh, and Jamie never says ooh about something she wants. And that light bulb, Cool, I'm going to get that. So yesterday, I went to the store to get it. It was gone. God. Doggone it. And, um, and I was going to use cash, so she knew I didn't go to the store and buy because we could look on our uh, uh, thing to see where we spent money. And I didn't want her to see that I spent money there. I wanted it to be a surprise, but it was, it was gone. I like getting presents for people, especially ones that they want, ones where they're like, whoa, you know, and, and I like just a few moments of that this is really neat, and it's something that they use continually. Now, my salvation was something that I needed, something that I was made aware, and that I wanted, because I didn't want to go to hell. Man, oh man, I didn't want to go to hell. I wanted to go to heaven. But you know, did, you know, the Lord, God didn't send Jesus just to keep me out of hell? Did you know God didn't send Jesus just to let me go to heaven? Do you know what God wants from us? He wants fellowship with us. God wants to be glorified. God wants to be noticed. You say, well, isn't it wrong to want glory? For us, yes, because there's nothing we can glory about. But if there's anyone worthy of glory, it's him. If there's anyone worthy of adoration and praise and worship, it's him. Amen. There's no good that I have done. The good that I have done, it is only he that has made me able to do it. He is worthy. And when I received the gift that he gave, which was Jesus Christ, there was something that opened, there was something that happened in me to where I now, not that I want to repay it, because I could never repay it, but I want to show him I love him. I want to show God that I love him. 
I want to show God that I'm thankful that he saved me. I don't want to just be lethargic and lazy in my salvation. The Bible says that we were saved unto good works. Saved unto good works. So let me ask you, is the Lord on your gift list this year? With all of the shopping and all of the going and all of the browsing and all of the looking and all of the driving and all of the thinking, mom, dad, and children, and grandma and grandpa, and the cousin and the name drawing and all these different people and all these different things, did you put Jesus on your list? You say, well, we're going to bake him a chocolate cake. He doesn't care about no chocolate cake. Now, we do. We sing happy birthday to Jesus. <laughs> you say, well, that's corny. I, I, I don't care. It's his birthday. I mean, we're going to celebrate it like a birthday. The only way that we know how, with chocolate cake and chocolate ice cream. It's the only way. There ain't no vanilla in heaven. Uh, but um, you, <laughs> is Jesus on your gift list? What do you plan to give him? What do you, you say, what can I give him? What, what can I give him? Now, besides the fact that we can, uh, we can give to him by giving to his church, by giving to his people, by giving to his children, which is all of us. I want to give you just a couple of suggestions this morning on some things that we can give the Lord. Number one, number one, you can give something called commitment. Commitment. Make a commitment. Make a goal. Give a commitment to the Lord. Say, you know what? I'm going to commit Wednesdays. I'm going to be there on Wednesdays. I'm going to commit Sundays. You know what? Sundays, I'm there Sundays. Uh, starting next year, church starts at 10 o'clock. You say, what? Yes, church, the theme of church. Now, not church service, not the main service. It's still the same construct, but church starts at 10. The church day starts at 10 a.m. I don't know how to call it. Sunday school. Nope, not Sunday school anymore. It's just split services. We got a split service for the kids and split service for Pip and split service. Miss White, she's going to have a class next year. And um, a split service, split, I don't know what are we going to do, what we're going to call it. We'll, I don't know if we'll keep Sunday school, but church starts at 10 a.m. Uh, commit that. Say, you know what, I'm going to make a commitment to tithing this year. I'm going to make a commitment to see somebody saved this year. I've never seen anybody saved, and I'm going to get somebody saved this year. Well, well, not me, but the Lord. We, I know we all know what you mean. I am going to lead somebody to the Lord this year. I'm going to do it. Make a commitment. Commit to the Lord, 2 Timothy 1.12. Um, for the which cause uh, I do suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Now, what, have, what is he saying here? I know what he's saying. As I've committed my faith, my soul, to the promise of salvation, and I know that he's able to keep it. I know the Lord is able to keep that which I've committed. I've given my life to him. I've given my, my, my soul to him. I've given myself to Christ, and I know that he's able to keep me unto that day, the day of death, the day of death, the day that I die, or the day of the judgment seat of Christ, where we stand and receive the deeds of our body, we can commit ourselves to him. We, as I just said, we commit our souls to him in salvation. I did that. That's, that's number one. You can't do anything else. You can't serve the Lord with gladness. You can't do anything that has a lasting eternity. I don't care if you go build the biggest church in Fort Wayne and you attract all kinds of people. You have the biggest bands and the best orchestra and, and uh, opera singers and you have the most intellectual, encouraging services like Joel Olstein and all these guys and you pro preach a uh, prosperity gospel and you, uh, uh, you think you heal people and you're just so anointed. If you're not saved, when you stand before the Lord and you won't be at the judgment seat of Christ, you'll be at the great white throne judgment where he says, depart from me, I never knew you. Wait, Lord, didn't we, didn't we not do many miracles? Did we not preach in your name? Did we not heal? Did we not uh, uh, have thousands of people come to the services? He says, depart from me, I never knew you, ye which work iniquity. If you're not saved, all that you do is for nothing. Your life is for nothing, it's a waste. I don't care if, you go, I don't care if you're in the Hall of Fame. 
I don't care if you're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Baseball Hall of Fame, the NHL Hall of Fame, NASCAR Hall of Fame, NBA Hall of Fame, NFL Hall of Fame. I don't care what Hall of Fame that you might be in. Uh, 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 it's all for nothing. It'll all burn up one day. It's all, all the all the busts of people, all the names etched and put on plaques, all burned up, all gone. You'll be forgotten forever if you're not saved. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever if you're not saved. So today, today is the day of salvation. Today is because you could, just like I drive down the road and I see car accidents and I see all kinds of bad things happen out on these interstates, today could be your day. I get up every morning. Every morning when I'm walking out the door, I say, Lord, bring me home. Bring me home. And I don't mean heaven. Bring me home. I'm not ready for heaven. I'm not ready for heaven unless... He's ready. Now, I know the Lord has got a big, giant will, and he's sovereign, and if I were to die and leave my young children here, that God would have a plan, and I would hope that my kids and my wife and my family would say, we're trusting the Lord, we've got faith in the Lord, and we've got a plan for the Lord, and somebody would influence my kids to do right for the Lord. Maybe a fire would spark up in one of them and say, you know what, I'm going to follow in my father's footsteps, and I'm going to accomplish what his dreams were for the Lord. I don't know what the will of the Lord is. Now, I don't want to die. I'm 35 years old. I've got a church I want Jesus to build through me. I've got people I want to see saved. I've got children I want to rear. I've got a wife I want to love. I've got people I want to love. I've got a a life to build and a life to live. And I want to add things to my eternal bank account. I've got rewards I want to earn. I've got places I want to go and things I want to do. I don't want to die yet. But I know I serve a sovereign God. I know that I do, and I've committed my soul to him so that when I know that I die, and I'm going to die, that when I die, I'm going to heaven. Not because I'm special, but because he is special. Not because I've done good works, but because he's done the work. When he said, it is finished, the price has been paid. Now, of course, he had to rise from the grave. Of course, he had to come back from the dead and say, I told you so. And I have placed my faith in the one who said, I am. I am. Muhammad didn't say that. Buddha didn't say that. Joseph Smith didn't say that. The the communists can't say that. The socialists can't say that. The liberals can't say that. The Republicans can't say that. Bless God, we serve a God who is the I am. We serve a God who who said he would, who is doing what he said he would do, and will accomplish all that he has said he is going to do. We serve a risen Savior. I love that song. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living no matter what men say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me, he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, uh, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. Go ahead and ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. You see, unbelievers can't tell believers that what they believe is false because they don't know. The Bible says that God, that the, that the natural man can't understand the things of God. His eyes are covered. He can't understand it. But per adventure, amen, God grants them or gives them the ability to understand. And that's what we pray for, that man, God is not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to salvation. If you're not saved, get saved. If you know somebody who's not saved, get them saved. Number two, we can, or uh, number one, we can commit our souls to him. Also commit our service to him. Ladies, you just sang, that was a service, commit it to him. Commit it to him. Miss Sarah, you clean the building, do it as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. Miss uh, Miss Kirsten, there's not a whole lot you can do right now, but did you know you can do your therapy as unto the Lord? One step at a time, God is granting you the strength to do it. And your, your will, your will, I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. Commit your service to him. Commit your service to him. I mean, I, I, I got uh, Brother Alex, you know, he'll, he's the guy who hides behind the curtain. He doesn't want the limelight in any way, shape, or form. I was playing pick a hand with people last night with a couple of dollars, and he's like, no, no, no. Take my money, sucker. He wouldn't do it. Uh, but um, uh, uh, God bless him. But he, man, when he came into church and he, stu- he, he found out what we were all about, he's like, all right, I'm all in. 
I'm all in. Here's a computer. Here's some cameras. Here's some stuff. Let's go. Let's do this. What you guys preach and what the Bible is all about needs to be broadcasted. And the videos and the reels that he's posted have reached 8,000 people, 2,000 people, 5,000 people, 6,000 people. I mean, I'm like blown away. No way. He, and uh, we're working. We're going to work on a podcast. We're going to put something together to where the gospel gets out. Folks, if we've got 15, 20, 25, 30, 50 years left before the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. Let's let our light shine in the dark Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne's dark. The city of church is my eyeball. Well, let's make it the city of the church and let us be the church. We can commit our service to him. Number two, we can commit our conversation to him. Our conversation, Titus uh, 2.8, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupt, this is the one, let no corrupt communication proceed out of thy mouth, out of your mouth, the Bible says, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. It does us no good to sit around and criticize people. It does us no good. You know how, how our church was injured so long ago? is because corrupt communication proceeded out of people's mouths. Some people learned that and repented and got right. Some people didn't and got bitter and got angry and their heart got hard. Some people were edified, amen? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of thy mouth. Critical, rude, um, rudely, sar- I mean, listen, I'm a sarcastic guy, but I do it with, with good humor. I don't mean to injure anybody. I want to use it right um, because I'm, it's got to be a gift because I'm just too good at it. <laughs> Sarcastic is like a second language, um, but I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to injure anybody unless it's a stinking wolf, unless it's, somebody, unless it's somebody spreading lies about the gospel, unless it's somebody talking bad about my Savior, unless it's somebody trying to injure, injure my church and injure my sheepfold. Listen, I am the under-shepherd. God has given the staff to me to watch over this flock and to guide this flock. And if somebody wants to come in here and start talking trash, we'll get them out of here. Brother Pip and Brother Kevin will throw them out with grace and love, of course. Uh, uh, yeah, throw them out on their stinking heads. It'll minister grace into the hearers. I want to speak, speak life to people. Speak help to people. Encourage people. Love people. Tell people you can. I believe in you. I love you. I'm proud of you. I'm rooting for you. I'm praying for you. I'm thinking about you. I know you can do it. Hang in there. I want to give my conversation to the Lord. I don't want to, I don't want to waste my time talking about nothing. So how can, how can I direct my conversation? I talk to him. Spend more time talking to him. That's guiding your conversation. Talk to him. Number, uh, 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 number two under conversation is talk about him. Talk about the Lord. Let's talk about Jesus, the King of kings is he, the Lord of lords supreme through all eternity. That's all I know. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about Jesus more and more. Let's talk about Jesus. Man, let's think about Jesus, read about Jesus, know about Jesus so you can talk to him and you can talk about him. And number two, and number three, you can talk for him. Talk for him. You say, talk for him. Yes, the words that Jesus spoke need to be echoed through eternity through my mouth. Because what? No, no you're not, you're not your own. You've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your members. What's the best way to glorify God? Talk about Jesus. You want to glorify God? Talk about Jesus. Talk about Jesus. Who do we, to who? Oh, I talk to saved people about Jesus. What does that do? It edifies them. I talk to the lost about Jesus. What does that do? It evangelizes them. We don't like evangelism. Hang you, we're evangelizing. Well, you can't knock doors here, says who? Well, I'm the neighborhood watch guy. Good, here's an invitation to our church. You go to church anywhere? No. Well, come on now. Bold as a lion, amen. I talk to the saved to edify and to encourage. I talk to the lost to evangelize and to open their eyes to salvation. And I talk to everybody I can about Jesus to exalt Jesus. I can't help it. Anywhere I go, I was at Penske, I talked about Jesus <clears throat> to my superiors and to guys that I worked with. 
I talk to uh, 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 all kinds of folks. I, I work here over here at Polar King. Conversation comes up. I work in church. I work in Jesus. I work in anything I can about God. God is good all the time. God will protect you. I was making a delivery in Ma, uh, Milan. I think it's Milan or Milan, Michigan. And we had, we, it was a disaster. The whole thing was a disaster. But <clears throat> we set it down, and they, it was a Compassion Ministries uh, building, and we are delivering a freezer building there. And uh, I said, y'all know what Romans 8, 20, because it wasn't working out. And, and uh, they ordered a 42-inch door, and the door that came was a 48-inch door, and it didn't match up to the hole they cut in the building. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a mess. Um, uh, but I said, y'all know what Romans 8, 28 is, right? She kind of looked at me. I said, all things work together for good. To them, and they're supposed to be religious. I throw it out, and I quote it. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. I said, if you're doing God's work, this is, this is his plan. It'll work out. This is just a bump in the road. You'll get over it. And they all looked at me like, who's this truck driver? What's he, what? <laughs> uh, uh, I try to exalt Jesus to everyone. I try to exalt Jesus to everyone. Number one, commit to him. Number two, conversation. Your conversation about him. Number three, Give him you. Give him me. How can I give him me? Well, I try to, they say don't dress, don't, don't, don't dress, um, uh, I can't remember exactly, but they say dress for the job you want. Dress for success. Dress for success. I, so I say I tried to, I heard Brother Hiles some years ago, he said he would all, he, he prayed and said, dear God, what do I, what do I wear on Sunday? What do I wear on Sunday? Come on, what do you wear on Sunday? What do I wear on Sunday? I want to look appropriate. I want to look the best I can. Uh, you say, well, you you putting on a show? No, I'm, I'm, no, but I want to look nice. Anybody like, you like looking nice? I like to look nice. Not to prop myself up, but because uh, uh, who I represent, what I'm about. Now, come find me on like a Monday evening in my truck. I'm wearing shorts and flip-flops and a T-shirt and I'm a trucker, baby. Uh, breaker one nine. Uh, can I get a comeback? You know, uh, but um, and I didn't the other day. Uh, I think my rate, my my CB's busted or something. I can't get anybody to respond to me. I can hear them, but they can't hear me. Lucas and I had a good time on that CB, didn't we? Down in Savannah, uh, we had some fun. What was our word? Indubitably, indubitably. <laughs> we had a good time, man. Uh, but what do I what do I want to give God? You say it's a little thing, but I want to give God my closet. My closet or my, my, uh, uh, my clothes. First Thessalonians 5.22, it says, abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And behold, there met him a woman with the tire of a harlot and subtle of heart. Now, I don't, I don't want to dress in a way that is seductive. And it's kind of hard for a guy to, uh, ladies, I don't know how a guy would dress seductively. I don't. I don't under I don't know how, but ladies, we know you can, and I don't. That's not a that's not a a, a, a diss in any way, shape, or form. But I'm saying be um, attentive to the way you dress because men and, you should, and and the world will bash men and the world will uh, uh, hate on um, anybody who has testosterone. They'll call it toxic, but it's the way God made men. Man likes woman. Where did she get that name? He looked and said, "Whoa, man." Whoa, man, caveman style. Whoa, man. Now, that's, it, that's Bible, folks. Uh, no, it's, I don't know where that came from. Uh, but give God your attire. <clears throat> be appropriate. Be appropriate. And also be attractive for him. What is God like? I think God, I think the Lord Jesus likes um, modesty. He likes holiness. The Lord, there is no darkness in the Lord, the Bible says. I want to be attractive for the Lord. I want to look appropriate for the Lord. And then number four, number four, I want to give God my closet. The Bible says, uh, Matthew 6, 6, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. When I was a kid, I heard my dad preach about your prayer closet. Brother Alex, I had a literal closet. I went into my room. We got up at 6 o'clock in the morning before school. We went to the living room. We read our Bibles, which is weird to me because where was everybody else? It was mom and dad and Jake and Jamal in the living room reading their Bibles. Where did everybody else? Where was everybody else? 
But why were they allowed to stay in their rooms? Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, and we see how that turned out. Uh, but uh, they all got 30 minutes extra of sleep. Jamal and I are sitting there reading Leviticus, you know. <laughs> but when we were done, I got up. I read my, my portion of scripture for the day, and I went into a prayer closet. I was um, seven, eight, nine years old. Went to a prayer closet, and I prayed. I prayed for my family. I prayed for a Batman action figure. Uh, I prayed for a pinstripe suit. Um, I prayed for the bus ministry in our church. Um, I went into a closet. I didn't know any better. And you know what I think God did? I think God blessed the childlike, we'll use the word faith. The childlike faith. The, word, the Bible says closet. Well, I didn't know that the word and definition meant closed off place. I think that fly came back from the dead. <laughs> Has it? Well, kill it. Uh, somebody's grand, grandmother. I got the grandfather. You get the grandmother. Uh, <laughs> uh, I went into a closet. Man, I went into a closed off place, and I talked to the Lord. I gave him my heart. I went to the Lord. He says, go into your closed off place. Go in there and close it off. We need time to think about the Lord through Bible reading. And here's the word. A lot of people don't do it. Meditation. Meditating on what you read. I listened uh, the other week. I listened to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the book of Genesis while I was driving. Um, on my phone app, you can listen to scripture. So I was listening to it and I came across John 4 where um, uh, the woman at the well. And Jesus said, if you drink of this water, you shall you know, you shall thirst again. But if you drink of the water that I give you, you'll never thirst again. And I thought about that, thought about that, and thought about that. And it's something that I meditated on. Take something that you read that sticks out to you. I don't care if it's a word or a phrase or a chapter or a, 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 a command. Look at it, read it, and say, man, what is that about? My dad always said, chew on that. Because the Bible talks about eating and, and, and the living water and the bread and chew on it, think about it, meditate on it, think about it. You need time to talk to the Lord. You need time to talk to him. And then last, number five, we need, or, or, uh, we need to give him our children. I wanna give my children to the Lord. A lot of churches have baby dedication days. Baby dedication, baby dedication. Give him my children. Man, the next generation needs Jesus. The next generation needs Jesus. Lead them to Christ. Lead them. You know what? You want your kids to uh, uh, um, uh, follow the Lord? Get involved in a ministry, in a service, and let your kids serve with you. Let your kids serve with you. Make it fun. Make it good. Make it uh, uh, exciting if you can. But do it right. Do it with a smile. Do it knowing you're doing it for the Lord. And then let them have the satisfaction of serving others and knowing it was for the Lord. Lastly, lastly, this is it. We give him our cares, and I've quoted this so many times. 1 Peter 5, 7. Anybody, can anybody quote that? How many times I've quoted it from the pulpit? Are you guys listening? Wake up, wake up, wake up. Cast your cares upon him. You don't have to quote it. I just wanted to. Casting all your cares upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. Cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. Take our cares to him, tell them to him, and then trust him that he's gonna take care of them. Let me tell you something. I've, um, I've uh, in closing here, I've, uh, uh, I do a lot of dreaming, so to speak, vision type of scenarios. What if, what if, what if? And things come up in our lives. And what I do is I try, in my mind, I try to play out the scenarios. Anybody else do that? You say, okay, here are the facts. Here's the, the, the data that we have on this situation. And if this happens like this and this and this and this and this, and we try to play it out in our minds and then say, okay, God, this is some, these are some of the ways that it can work out. <laughs> God's like, yeah. How about you just let me do my job? I've showed up. I was um, laying concrete, residential concrete, and people would come out and they want to like, Help. Go away. <laughs> you look at them and they're like, you know, uh, and there are some people that bring you lemonade or cook, and you're like, I don't know if I'd drink that, you know. 
Uh, I'll end up in the basement in chains or something. Uh, I don't know. I want to do that. Uh, but uh, or drink, eating brownies and they taste kind of funny. And hey, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, laying concrete, but people want to come out and manage. It's like, what? Do you lay concrete? Well, no. Then go away. Let me do my job. And God says, do you do you make the sunshine? Did you set the moon and the stars and the galaxies in their course? Did you, did you say, let there be and there was? No. Then God looks down on us and says, well, then let me do my job. I want to get out of God's way and let him do it. I just want to be obedient. I want to be obedient to the Lord and give him the things that I care about, the things that I pray about, the things now and the things in the future. I want to give God all of my cares. And... I don't, uh, I didn't write any notes for this one, but I want to give God my choices. What I drink, what I eat, where I go, who I hang out with. Will I go to church? Will I not go to church? Will I tithe? Will I not? I want to find out what does the Bible say about the things that I have to choose. And I want to do what the Bible says to do. I don't care what. So what can you give God? What can you give Jesus for Christmas? Any of those things that I just told you all of those things that I just told you. Don't forget Jesus this Christmas. I'm excited about Christmas just like anybody else. I'm so excited to find out what Lucas got me for Christmas. It's a pair of socks. Um, uh, I want to find out what, what, what I got, and I'm excited to see the, the, the reactions of, um, of uh, Jamie when she opens up that new vacuum cleaner. I'm excited to see, you know, Houston open up that, that pack of um, pencils, you know, uh, some, some three-by-five cards, you know. Uh, but uh, I'm excited to see the reactions of people, you know, because I, I put thought into some of these things, and, and um, uh, uh, they'll enjoy them. But I want God to know that I've given him me, my commitment. Not that I'm anything special, because I give God me, and he makes me and molds me and makes something out of me. What are you giving Jesus for Christmas? Would you bow your head and close your eyes, please? What will Jesus get for Christmas? You say, what do you get the man who has everything? You give him what he doesn't have because he doesn't have everything if he doesn't have you. God is rich, but God's not so concerned about the riches as much as he is about you. God wants your life. He wants your commitment. He wants your choices and your cares. He wants your conversation. He wants your children. Raise them up for Christ. Raise them up to do right. God wants you and yours. You are not your own. You've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God. In your members. In just a moment, Miss Jennifer's gonna begin to play. Why don't you uh why don't you come forward this morning? Make a commitment. Give God your cares. Tell God you're gonna start making the right kind of choices for him. Why don't we do that?